Hi, I'm Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to share with you my top 10 florals. Now these are fragrances that have floral as kind of the star show. Um, for a long time I was really like iffy on florals, but I happen to love them now. Love them! So I've got 10 to share with you, but before I get started, if you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and hit that button. Join the weird and wonderful family. I would love to have you part of the community. And if you already are a part of the community, thank you for being so awesome. You guys are what make this channel amazing. You're positive, you interact with one another, uh, share each other's love for fragrance, and I just am so happy to have you all on this journey with me in the area of fragrance and other stuff depending on my mood. So without further ado, let's get into this. Now, speaking of florals, Rose Forever New York sent me this amazing bouquet of roses over. Now these, uh, although they look so perfect, they almost don't look real. They actually are real roses. They've been preserved in natural oils. I don't know how they do it. I don't know what kind of sorcery goes into this, uh, but yeah, they are absolutely beautiful. The cool thing about this company is they use the natural oils, oils to preserve the roses. Uh, but then they also use vegan products uh, for all their boxes. Even the suede is vegan. And then the pigments that they use for some of their kind of more outrageous roses, like the, you know, the deep blue roses, they use uh, vegan pigments. The cool thing about this, like my husband, he bought me roses for Valentine's Day. So they were beautiful for maybe a week and then they start to die and dry out and they look a little bit sad, but I didn't want to get rid of them because he got them for me and they're really pretty and so I just watched them die. It's kind of sad. They lasted two weeks. Like not even. They lasted a week and then started dying. <laughs> they were fully dead by two weeks. These are not going to last you two weeks. They're not going to last you four weeks. They're going to last you 52 weeks. 52 weeks. So if you love roses, Go check out their website. I'll leave everything linked down below, including uh, a $20 off coupon that you can use. Um, they've got multiple colors, multiple sizes. Like this is the 16, they have a nine, they have a single, they've got a 32. I think they may have bigger than that. They come in square, they come in round, they come in domed, they come in plexiglass, like drawered containers, come in all sorts of things. Uh, there's something for everybody's decor. I personally love the ivory. They look almost a little bit more white than ivory, uh, so just kind of a warm white. Uh, these go really well with my decor and I love having them on my desk. You could put them on your nightstand and yeah, they're just stunning. The fragrance. Uh, I had heard that there was no fragrance. I was happy to find out that they actually do have just a, an ever so slight rose fragrance. So I can smell the rose. It's not very strong, so not overpowering. Personally, I wish the smell was just a little bit more, although that could get um, a little bit much for some people. So this has just, just enough to make them smell rosy. Uh, yeah, so I like going by them and sniffing them too. I'm very happy with these. Uh, go check out the link if you're interested. So what I thought I'd do is I'd share uh, them kind of in floral families. So I'm going to start with Coco Mademoiselle. I'm going to share some that kind of have like a mixture of florals. So I don't necessarily no notice a specific floral, but there's definitely that floral component involved. So the first one is Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel. Now you guys know this is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. It's classy. When you put it on, you smell amazing. It puts me in a good mood. The longevity on this is like 10 hours at least. So I love wearing this one. Now the opening of Coco Mademoiselle is a, a little more of a warm, sweet orange fragrance. Uh, smells to me like sunshine, honestly. So the floral mix in this one is rose, orange blossom, jasmine, mimosa, and ylang ylang. Now, it's so well blended that I don't really pick up one floral over the other. It's just a beautiful, soft, sweet floral. If anything, I would say I get a little bit more of the rose in this one, but it's just stunning. So you get the floral component, I would say, throughout the wear of the fragrance. 
uh, but it's not like an overpowering heady floral. So when I say heady, uh, sometimes headache inducing, you kind of smell it up here somehow. This is a little bit more grounded and just smells sweet and uh, sweet, delicate, feminine, classy, delicious, love it. Now another fragrance that has quite a few floral components to it is Prada La Femme. This one has frangipani, tuberose, ylang ylang, and iris. Um, I would say, although there, there is that mixture, I'm getting more ylang ylang, I'd say, in tuberose than anything. Uh, probably the tuberose more so. Prada La Femme, um, it smells rich and classy again. I find that with florals. A lot of florals I find to be really like classy smelling, put together, feminine. This one is no different. So this smells like a rich boss lady that's on vacation. She, um, yeah, she she's decided to take vacation in the Maldives. Uh, when she is at work, she's wearing a winter white wool suit. Uh, with a beautiful fancy bag, but when she goes on vacation, she's wearing a plunging neckline, one-piece white bathing suit with some sort of flowy thing, a very large hat, some huge sunglasses. She has high heels on and she walks out onto this little kind of patio that she has. There's beautiful palm trees around and you can smell the florals. And there is a man that is feeding her grapes because she doesn't feed herself. She's too rich to feed herself. She's too busy to feed herself for that matter. She's always on the ball and basically the money is just rolling in. To me, this is what Prada La Femme smells like. I love it. What you get in this one is kind of a clean smelling floral. So it smells a little bit like a uh, really fancy shower gel, I would say. Uh, it's got some spices in there. Oh, it's just beautiful. Now this one can get a little bit heavy, heady. Uh, there's, I think, beeswax in this one and just a little bit of spice in it. So although there is that heady component, I find white floral sometimes can kind of create a headachey feel or, you know, they're kind of up in here. Uh, so really flowery is kind of what I associate with heady. Although this one can be like that, I find with that, you know, the beeswax, I think there's beeswax in this one, spices, it just kind of grounds it a little bit. I love it. L'Enterdi by Givenchy EDP is my next one. And this one has three florals. I call it the floral trifecta. It's tuberose, orange blossom, and jasmine. And I find that a lot of fragrances have that combination. Now this one, although it's got the three florals in it, it tends to be more tuberose again. Now where the tuberose in this one is a little bit more flowery smelling, this one is definitely more of that bubblegum sweet tuberose. So this is paired with pear uh, and then it's got vanilla in it as well. So this one is a little bit more of a syrupy floral uh, but certainly you're getting the presence of that tuberose for sure. Uh, this is delicious. It smells, again, it smells syrupy. It smells like a pear syrup, like, like almost like a pear tuberose reduction. If you could somehow reduce it into kind of a syrupy something something that you drizzle all over yourself, that would be L'Enterdi EDP. Um, I just, I think that this one is absolutely gorgeous. You've got to love tuberose to like this one. Speaking about the floral trifecta, another one that has jasmine, orange blossom, and tuberose is Twilly d'Hermes. Now this one, um, I would say I get a nice mixture of the three florals, but I would say I'm smelling more of that florally tuberose and orange blossom than anything. This is sweet, but it's grounded with a little bit of ginger. This one smells like, to me, this one smells a bit mature. Uh, now, again, that's so subjective, but this one smells, I always think of it as a rich auntie, but I'm not talking like, you know, like the old, like, hello dear, let me pinch your cheeks. Like not that kind of old. I'm talking like a put together rich aunt. She's really nice to go in for a hug and you just smell this beautiful smell. She's quite vivacious. She's classy. Uh, you kind of admire her cause she dresses really nice. <laughs> 
shots that anti. Like, I I hope I'm that anti, but yeah, this this is really beautiful. Um, it smells like spring to me. There's a sweet component to this one. The florals, in my opinion, are definitely the star of the show in Twilly Dermes. Next one is Elisab Le Parfum. This one is orange flower and jasmine, but I don't notice the jasmine at all. This is straight up orange blossom in my opinion. Le Parfum, it, it, it would be my most heady fragrance. So this is the most floral fragrance that I have where it basically just smells straight florals. With a lot of these, like for instance, the, um, L'Entardi, you're getting that pear, you definitely notice the pear. I would say the floral is still really predominant in this one, but in but but there's still like, you know, you're noticing the vanilla and and the pear. Whereas, and same thing with something like Coco Mademoiselle, you're getting that floral component, but I definitely notice the orange in it. This one to me is pretty much straight up floral. Um, the The thing that makes this not painful is the fact that it has honey and cedar in it. So I find that as this one dries down, there's a bit of a, um, a little bit of a sweetness that comes from that honey. It's not a sticky, sweet kind of almost indolic honey like you get in a Scandal. It's just a, a, a very light, light sweet honey. Uh, and then with the cedar, this gives it a little bit more of a grounding. Um, I think this one is so beautiful. This is very, very feminine and again classy. I find that I want to wear fragrances like this or uh, like uh, Prada La Femme when I have an appointment and I don't have that many appointments. It's mainly doctor's appointments. <laughs> like, I don't know what the deal is, but when I go to the doctor, I want to smell professional. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's because it's so often undignified, but <laughs> I want to smell professional so I find that I'll pull out something like this when I want to smell like I've got my my poop in a group maybe the florals cover it up I don't know uh, this one though would be what I would consider the most headache inducing so if you struggle with florals steer clear from this one because it is going to be a super potent flower bomb that said I think it's absolutely stunning and definitely worth a sniff. If you find this one to be too like heady, um, then check out Elie Sable Parfum White. It has a peach component that kind of tempers down the floral. So you may want to check that out. But if you're an orange blossom fan, this one is so, so, so pretty. Now I've got a couple fragrances that kind of showcase Jasmine. The first one is of course Alien. Alien is jasmine, amber, and woody notes. Who knows what else they put in this sucker? Um, it's so, so beautiful. It's so beautiful. There, it's, It smells sexy, but there's a little bit of soapiness to it. Uh, it's, it's a little bit indolic. It's got some sweetness to it. It's a provocative powerhouse. This is gorgeous. I don't even know how to explain it. I find that Mugler's fragrances are all slightly out of the box and bizarre and Alien is no exception. I just love this. Uh, a lot of people find that it's like so dramatic and only to be worn in the night. I think it, you can wear this anytime. Um, it def definitely has a sexy quality to it, but it also uh, has a bit of a clean component to it too. So. I love this one. It's a, a super powerhouse too. So you put this on, it's going to last your whole entire day. Another jasmine fragrance is Valentino Donna's Born in Roma. Now I wasn't quite sure if I should include this one uh, because it definitely has a lot of sweetness to this one. You get black current in, it, current in this one. Uh, plus there's bourbon vanilla and I definitely get those three components. But for me, the jasmine definitely stands out. Like I definitely get um, a floral component to it that's quite strong. Uh, so I wanted to include it. This one is sexy as well. I find that jasmine is probably the sexiest floral. Uh, you know, you put that one on and it smells kind of sultry and whatnot, like especially when it's the star of the show. Valentino Donna Born in Roma definitely has that jasmine component. 
uh, paired with that bourbon vanilla, it's very, very sexy fragrance, uh, kind of flirty, a little bit playful. Uh, yeah, definitely one to sniff. Now, another single note floral would be Floral Streets Wonderland Peony. The star of the show is Peony, and I happen to love Peony and fragrances. Like, whenever I smell it, and I don't think actually Peony has an actual smell, but they make it smell kind of like candy-esque goodness. So I guess it would be a Peony Accord, but I just love it. Peony is sweet, it's playful, it's fun. And this one again, lots of different other notes, but that that peony stands out. This smells to me totally like some sort of like uh, fair that you go, to, like a county fair, except it's in some sort of happy bubble land where everything is just glorious and there's spring flowers and someone can sing a little tune and little birds come flying over. That's what this smells like to me. Like, I just love this fragrance. It doesn't last really great. I know I always say that. Definitely check Floral Street out because they have so many great fragrances and they're just all slightly different, so definitely worth checking. I have two more fragrances to share for you and they're both more on the rose end of things. The first one is Le Parfum Royal by uh, Elie Saab. This actually has orange blossom in it as well, but it has Turkish and Bulgarian rose. I don't notice any orange blossom in this. All I'm getting is actual orange and rose. This one, it kind of gives me Middle Eastern vibes. Uh, the rose is potent and slightly jammy, mixed with that orange that's slightly tart. Um, I think it's gorgeous. I think it has a similar kind of, it, it, it evokes a similar feel at, at, to Delina, in my opinion except this one's way more affordable. It's really strong rose, but oh, I think it's gorgeous. It's just this jammy, delicious rose, but it smells like there's some spices in there somehow. And I just imagine, you know, Jasmine from Aladdin? I just imagine her, uh, you know, with the kind of flowy kind of outfit. Like, I don't know even what you'd call it, but like this flowy outfit. She's walking and it's kind of midday. And, and the garden has like roses, like uh, vines of roses hanging everywhere and there's tendrils of green coming down, kumquats, or, you know, she can pick a kumquat off a tree and she's got her tiger. She always has a tiger. This girl goes nowhere without her tiger. Uh, that's what this smells like. I feel like a rich boss queen when I put this stuff on. Definitely, if you're a rose fan, this, this is my favorite rose fragrance for sure. Now the last fragrance I'm going to share with you is absolutely amazing and it's Flora Botanica by Balenciaga. Now this is discontinued. I don't know if you can still get it, but they do have a phenomenal dupe of it on Perfume Parlor's web. So I'm going to leave that link down below as well. I'll have all the fragrances linked down below, but I'll link that one to the Perfume Parlor version if you smell them side by side and you're not critiquing them, they smell almost identical. Um, but I find that the Perfume Parlor has just a slight bit more mint in it. If you're desperate to get your hands on Flora Botanica, instead of paying however much it is now, being it's discontinued, please go check out Perfume Parlor's link. Uh, because yeah, they have it's a really, really decent dupe. But this is just gorgeous. Now what's cool about this one is it opens up uh, with a lot of green. So it's got mint and cannabis. Uh, it smells to me like you're walking through this English garden and you come across this rose and it's early in the morning so there's dew on it and you smell it and you kind of get that dewy rose fragrance. Uh, really fresh but also with all the green around. That's this one. It's so delicate and beautiful. Uh, the, this one lasts a long time on the skin. I like the way it develops over time as well. So if you're into dewy rose, this is definitely more jammy rose. This is more dewy green rose. If you can't find this one and you really want it, please check out Perfume Parlor's site because their version is so, so decent and, and affordable. Like rather than whatever this is now, if you can even get your hands on it. And that is it. Those are my beautiful florals. Oh, 
I love them all. Like seriously, I, I, I can't actually pick a favorite because I like them for different occasions. So for something like an evening, I want to go for, for these. If I want something that is, uh, you know, a little bit more classy and put together, feminine, I might go for these. If I want something that's an experience, I'm going to go for the rose ones. If I want something playful, I'm going to go for this or like a lantardi. So, uh, you know, depending on my mood, I'm going to pick one of these, but they are all phenomenal. So what is your favorite floral fragrance? I would love to know. Please leave it in the comments below. And again, everything is going to be linked, linked in the description, including the roses, which I love. And yeah, that's it. Have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon.